Thank you for the positive comments on my last video. They were very nice. They made me feel very nice. Would you like to stop feeling nice? Because it's, it's time for that. We're almost done. We're so close to being done. So Elliot is still convinced that he's going to win the lottery by like making his mind win the lottery for him. Like I don't really understand how it's supposed to work, but he thinks he's going to win the lottery. He's like convinced about it. And he is supposed to be moving fairly soon, like a month from now to um, this different apartment. But he's like, oh, I'm never going to move into that apartment. Like, I'm going to win the lottery before then, which like, no, you're not. Like, We all know that he's not going to win the lottery. But he says this thing that I want to quote to you. I have craved power and significance all my life and I will stop at nothing to find ways of attaining it and yeah really sums it up so Elliot moves to this new place and he doesn't win the lottery like somebody else wins instead of him and he is so dramatic about it I'm gonna read this to you the winner was some guy from Riversdale he, oh, Riverside, sorry. He took my money, my is capitalized. What a waste, what an injustice. I was so certain that the universe would finally grant me salvation after a life of torture and suffering. I then looked at my small cramped room and realized that my lonely, depressing life of virginity will continue on mercilessly. Like, I feel like he thinks that he's like Harry Potter living under the stairs and really like he's living this life of privilege and just doesn't have any self-awareness. So upon finding out that he didn't win his lottery or the lottery, um, he goes into a rage and for some reason he has a wooden practice sword. What are you practicing for? And he like starts slashing that around and waving his knife in the air and like breaking shit he destroys his laptop so like now he has less money than he had before oh oh it gets worse okay i'm just gonna read this whole paragraph i i haven't even read it like completely i just skimmed it so you're gonna get my first reaction to reading this shit on the next morning i felt so drained and depressed i then realized that i destroyed my laptop so I called my mother, begging her to buy me a new one. I made up the story that the laptop randomly died and I had no control over it. After some persuading, I managed to make her agree to buy me a new one. Like, when you ask somebody a question like that, like somebody to do a favor for you, you, an adult who is getting paid every month, like, no means no. Like, stop, stop, stop pushing her, making her buy you a new laptop. I quickly drove to Best Buy to look for a new laptop and decided to choose a newer, updated version of the laptop I had previously. As it turned out, this Best Buy didn't have one in stock, so he drove to Oxnard. He paid, okay, he paid $1,500 for this laptop, okay? You want to know how much this laptop costs? $500. One third as much as he spent on his laptop. Like, that's bananas. And his mom, he just expected his mom, he says, the assurance that my mother will drive up to bring me a reimbursement in a few days because you, in a fit of rage, spilled wine all over your laptop on purpose and broke it. You're an adult. So as he's waiting for them to prepare his absurdly expensive laptop, Elliot goes to a shooting range and rents a handgun 
and like shoots at paper people and like I understand that some people do this for self-defense however this is some serial killer shit okay like he talks about how he's doing this because he is planning to carry out a massacre like he has this in his head already and now he's lost the lottery so like what what else does he have you know the potential of a 21 year old man no so Elliot has decided that he's going to kill a bunch of people and he goes into this like long ass thing about how like how good it's gonna feel and like how he's gonna like, like all this shit about killing people it's gross I'm not gonna repeat it like just know that it's poorly written and gross um but he starts the next semester he registers for classes and then immediately drops them because he had to register for classes so that his parents would like think that he's going to college but he actually is not going to college uh, because he's decided that in the next semester he will either get very wealthy or kill himself and others. And, you know, we all know how that went. So he continues talking about, like, how horrible his life is and how he's so put upon and he's suffering so much while using terrible grammar and punctuation. And he goes on to explain that the lottery... He's only going to play the lottery if it gets above 100 million cuz like if it's not 100 million then like who even cares, you know? But it keeps resetting before it gets to 100 million. Which you know the wild thing is if he just like was contented with winning the lottery at any amount of money, he would have a much better chance of actually getting to do it. He probably still wouldn't have, but he would have a better chance. But no, he's waiting until it gets above 100 million. So he finds out about the Powerball lottery, which is 500 million. So he drives to Arizona so that he can play in the Powerball. Like, can you imagine being Elliot Rogers' parent and you've been paying for him, like thinking that he's going to college and you find out that he's actually been driving from state to state playing the lottery. Like, oh my God. So here's what he writes about playing the Powerball, okay? I would be able to live above everyone who has wronged me and rub it all in their faces as a form of gratifying vengeance. That was my ultimate purpose in life. My reason for living. Paragraph break. I didn't win. <laughs> So Elliot is like so devastated about losing the Powerball that he calls his parents and has what he describes as a tantrum, which disturbs his parents so much that they finally, finally put him in therapy. And I say, uh, mm, well, they put, I wouldn't say that they put him in therapy. They arrange for him to see his psychiatrist and if you're not familiar a psychiatrist is not a therapist or a psychologist a psychiatrist is just you see them for 15 minutes and they're like okay how's your symptoms here's some drugs you know he needs therapy and also you they're like oh you can see your psychiatrist over winter break but that's not for a while like what is he gonna do until then kill people perhaps so at this point, Elliot buys a gun. So let's talk about guns. I'm not, I'm just gonna read it, okay? I'm just gonna read this to you. After I picked up the handgun, I brought it back to my room and felt a new sense of power. I was now armed. Who's the alpha male now, bitches? I thought to myself regarding all of the girls who have looked down on me in the past. Wonder why men own guns so much. So he goes on a trip with his mother and he has a discussion with his mother about 
whether I had any more hope in my life. I imagine that if your 21 year old son approaches you and asks whether or not he has any more hope in his life, that that's like an alarming experience, you know? I would hope that she is very alarmed and is going to, you know, get him to therapy. So he, um, it seems like he does not go to therapy. He, he doesn't mention it. If he does, I don't think that he does. Um, but he continues to drive to Arizona to play the lottery like several more times. And the last time he doesn't win, here's what he says about it. Um, he says that his children that he imagined that he was going to have with his beautiful blonde girlfriend, wife, whatever, um, they had been murdered by him losing the lottery. Um, you know what's worse than that, Elliot? Actual murder. You know, the stuff that you are planning on doing. So Elliot, um, continues to talk about how miserable he is and, like, how much he hates women. That's a new thing, kind of, is he talks about how much he hates women and he discovers this, um, website called P-U-A Hate. I don't know what the what the acronym stands for, but it's a bunch of men who can't get laid and are mad about it. Um, and he like sends the link to his parents who, according to him, just like ignore that, which um, red flags, red flags everywhere. And also let's talk about the way that Elliot Roger looks at women, okay? Elliot Roger, is Asian. He is not interested in Asian girls. He is not interested in any race of girls other than white and blonde. He doesn't want any girl who isn't like super hot and attractive is what it seems like. Um, so for him, that means tall and blonde. I think you need to like lower your expectations, but like, if you have no interest in people who look like you, that's weird. It's kind of weird. So Elliot, instead of going to therapy, his parents, like, basically hire friends, like, people around his age to hang out with him. And yeah, one of them is a girl who hangs out with him because his parents paid her to. And he says that that's the same as like hiring a sex worker and that he feels bad because he has to like pay a girl to hang out with him. So he just like makes him feel better in the moment, but afterwards he like feels worse. Um, and then he acts like he's making this real effort to like improve his life and give humanity and women a second chance to, you know, accept him or whatever. But really, um, what he's doing is taking a class for a week and then dropping it because he's mad at girls. So Elliot's about to turn 22. I'm 22, by the way. So my life is dramatically different <laughs> from Elliot's. Um, but anyway, he's about to turn 22. And he's like, okay, it's right before my 22nd birthday. I'm giving the female gender one last chance to provide me with the pleasures I deserved from them. Gross! You're gross! Ew! So, he gets drunk, he walks around, and he sees a bunch of popular kids socializing. Like, I'm 22, and basically since I started college, never once have I thought of anyone my age as a popular kid. Like, I feel like we've grown out of that. So Elliot finds a party. He goes inside. He takes some of their beer. And he just, like, stands around and then gets pissed off that nobody's talking to him. It's like, nobody knows you. You haven't approached anyone. You've said nothing to anyone. Like, why would they talk to you? And he sees a white girl talking to an Asian dude, and that pisses him off. 
because he's only half Asian and like what right does this Asian like full-blooded Asian have to talk to a white girl and so he gets pissed off and he like bumps into them and they're actually like super nice about it they're just like hey you seem like really drunk like you should get some water and then he like leaves and comes back and insults the guy so Elliot goes and stands out on a ledge by himself and this is a 10 foot ledge and a group of people start coming out onto the ledge also and um socializing with each other presumably because they know each other and Elliot's pissed that nobody's talking directly to him so he starts throwing insults which like what a great way to make friends and influence people Elliot maybe this is why nobody likes you and they start obviously like not responding to that well and so they're like insulting him back and he starts trying to push people off of the ledge and he goes for the girls first which is a dumb idea because obviously there's a group of dudes there who are like able to fight you because there are more of them and so he gets pushed off the ledge obviously so he's pushed off the ledge and he is like walking to go home and realizes that he says that somebody stole his sunglasses but really he probably just like left them at the party so he turns around and he's limping because he got pushed off a ledge so he's limping back to this place and the group of guys from earlier is like no you're not gonna go back to this party this is our party and you were antagonizing everyone and he is probably an asshole about it and so they beat him up and he finally gets home and he's like, nobody even helped me. If a girls were attracted to me, I would have a girl walking me home and offering to have sex with me to make me feel better. Which like, no you wouldn't, that's, that's not how it works. Um, when he gets home and he realizes that his necklace, his prized necklace is gone, so he's very upset. So afterwards, I don't know if he goes to the police or if the police go to him and he's like interviewed or what, but he's like, oh yeah, they deliberately pushed me off of the ledge. And like, doesn't mention the fact that he tried to push people off of the ledge first. Um, and he's like worried. He's like, I am, I think that I might get in trouble because I did like try to push people off a ledge and like threaten to kill everybody. And like, yeah, that's a problem. I wish that he had gotten in trouble for that because then maybe he wouldn't have been out shooting people pretty soon after this but anyway he turns 22 and like I don't want to do this anymore today so that's where we're gonna end thank you for watching this is uh turns out not the end there's gonna be another video sorry goodbye <laughs>